This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Clueless State Trading Frank. It's another one of those great, awesome strategic webinars, which have pretty much had a track record. I wouldn't say 100%, but I would say a good 70 to 80% of the time, especially on the long-term forecast. We are on the ball with a 90 plus percent track record on what we talked about and what happened. Now, in the interim, uh, it is uh, 8.38 p.m. on uh, July 10th, 2019. Thank you for attending. We have uh, three great members here. It's a, absolutely a uh, beautiful evening here on the East Coast um, and hopefully on your side of the world. Um, and it's, uh, and uh, okay, that, that's it. So 8.38 p.m., uh, July 10, 2019, full disclosure, this is purely for financial education, not for any solicitation or advice. Um, thank you for attending, and let's begin. So a couple of things that we're going to cover today, and I had I actually made some notes because I'm normally not that, I'm very unscripted, right? Like, like our precedent, we are very unscripted. You know, we just like say what's on our mind. Um, so. One, a couple of things, uh, topics I want to talk about is like, um, why are traders missing huge trades? Which is the majority of traders out there. I'm sure a bunch of my members are taking a couple of small trades or some big, and which have turned small money into big money. And God bless them, because that's what the market is delivering. It's not a homogenous market. Not every stock goes up every day. But then you sit on something for about three, five days, six days, like a guidance health. GH, read up on that company, revolutionary company, by the way. Um, and, and the options go from, um, as you all know, go from 34 cents yesterday to a buck 40. That's 400%. Take out the initial capital. That's 300% on your money. Just one example. So why? are a lot of traders missing huge trades. Look, I'm missing a couple. I'm selling a little bit too early at certain times. Amazon, I slapped myself three times today. Even though I moved up and rolled over to the higher strikes, those $6.40 calls, which is printed on the Twitter feed, went at close, Sixty-five. I mean, think about that for a minute, because the problem with traders and humans are they don't think. You don't have to overthink, but think about it for a minute. What would difference it would make if you bought something? I gotta change the color. Hold on. If you bought something at six, seven, eight which those Amazon calls were, these were the 1980 calls. Forget about the 1960 calls that I alerted on Monday. So let's look at that. So Amazon, I alerted you guys to buy the 1960, 1980 calls. I'm going to cover the 1960s in a second. When the stock was way down because we were selling off like what? First part of the week? So the 1980 calls went from roughly seven, forget $6.40 when I alerted, to 62. So you put $700, but you buy one call and you say, yes, I'm going to bet $700. The chart looks great. Um, I told you what the path for the market was going to be. That Fed, uh, uh, the great patriot, American patriot, um, the Fed chairman Jerome Powell, who my New York boy Donald keeps on pissing on, doesn't matter. Look what he answered on the testimony today, the congressional testimony. If Donald Trump fires him, he's going to say no, and God bless him. Look. Our great president, Trump, does a lot of great things for American business, American economy, but he's not right all the time. He wants to fire somebody who is trying to help 
the U.S. economy grow and do the right thing? Jerome Powell? Give me a break. I sound like Kramer on TV, right? Seriously. I mean, come on. That bullshit. And he said, no. I have a four-year term mandated by U.S. constitutional law as a Federal Reserve governor. I'm going to stay. And I hope he stays. Because, God damn it, if he gets fired and removed, the market's going to fall 2,000 points right away. I don't give a crap what Donald's talking about. Everybody, every president wants lower interest rates. Well, he's delivering it. He's saying he's going to cut rates. The Turkish dictator Erdogan just fired his central bank governor and their economy just went into a tailspin. Do you really want Donald Trump to do that in America? We are not dictators. We are a democracy. End of story. So $700 put into Amazon went to $6,200. I actually have certain members who put about 10 contracts slightly bigger players that's seven thousand dollars they went to sixty two thousand dollars along the way they did take some profits so maybe they didn't go from exactly seven thousand to sixty two thousand they at least made which i know for a fact thirty to $40,000 in how many days? In three days, based on my charts, based on my alerts. Now you tell me what the heck's going on. Now, why does the stock go up like this? And I've explained that to you in multiple webinars, all of you, including House who keeps on being a scared chicken half the time. House, how are you? Okay? I'm beautiful. Take... Yeah, I know you're beautiful. But did you take 700 to make 6,200 or 7,000 to make 62,000? No. So you're not that beautiful yet, trust me. I'm a coach. I'm not here to placate people saying, oh, I made a little money. We are delivering amazing alerts on multiple stocks, multiple, and a couple of slipping and sliding. Even Boeing that was down today made a crap load of money right off the bat in the morning. So as traders, as humans who are trying to strive to better our lives, we need to really push ourselves and not just be placated by our emotions to say okay i'm doing okay this market is giving free money like my last video gotta take it am i excelling in what i'm putting across and at peak performance 100 percent? no i'm the one who sucks too because i'm selling a little bit too early even though my charts are so freaking accurate well here's the best part of the story and before I get to the, that part of the story, let me remind you, Amazon, 1980 calls, delivered on Monday at around $640, $657, went to 62 today, 700 goes to 6,200, 7,000 goes to 62,000. Doesn't matter what you like in life, a house, a amazing trip around the world, so you see that what the world is all about, a Porsche, a Lamborghini, a McLaren, go take it. You can pay that off with one trade. Your kid's tuition, you pay it off in one trade. That's America. That is the beauty of our great nation and our financial markets, the deepest, most liquid markets in the world. Now, if you want to sit aside and just say, oh, I did okay. No. That's not how America was built. America was built on grit and risk. You don't have those two, don't be a freaking trader. And this all happened in three days. End of story. Look, 
I'm not like a snake oil uh, promoter like the rest of the frigging uh, uh, um, services out there who keep on saying, oh, I'm going to make you a millionaire. But God damn it, how many amazing frigging trades have we delivered consistently from the worst days in the market, opening down six, uh, three, four hundred points and calling the shots, saying this is what you should buy. This is what the inverse head and shoulders. This is what's going on. So please respect yourself. Forget about respecting me and disrespect yourself if you're not doing peak performance. End of story. So let's talk about why a trade is missing the trades. We already talked about that. Guggenheim Partners. Who is Scott Minard? He's a guy who's about 240 pounds, a massive bodybuilder. Had a chance to meet with him a couple of times at my old firm. I actually sold a lot of Guggenheim Partners um, products on the uh, uh, ETF side. They had some excellent products to my institutional clients and my high net worth retail clients uh, back in uh, the 2000s till I was there on Wall Street till 2010, mid 2010. And I have a sword from Guggenheim Partners because I was such a great, not just salesman, but a great. Um, uh, promoter for their funds. So Scott Minard is one of the, and, and Google him. Get to learn the business. Get to learn the minds who don't talk bullshit. He's actually a bond guy. So Scott Minard said today, and he actually said a couple of months ago, and he's not like a stock bull. Like he's not like, you know, guys like us, like a rah, 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 we know this thing's going to go up. He's like a very calm bond type of guy. Remember, the bond guys, government bonds, corporate bonds, they're actually very sober. They're the guys you want to go for a bar. Uh, if you go for a drink at the bar, you're going to get bored of your frigging mind in five minutes. You'll be like, oh, see you later. I'll see you two weeks. Okay. You guys, you go to a bar with the stock guys like us. You'll be like, I want to I wanna just hang out with you. Can I come and stay in your basement? So he's a boring guy. Read. Google him. See what he said. So 1998, the Asian, uh, there was a, the, uh, the Fed cut rates after the Asian flu in 1996. I started in, uh, in um, Wall Street uh, uh, around 1996, 1997. Knew nothing about the markets. Loved the markets. I had a couple of brain cells left in me, right? I'm hungry. I'm a true American. I want to learn. I parked my boss's car at the fish market in Fulton Street. Now I own cars better than my bosses, ex-bosses. They weren't like market guys. They just knew people. So I learned a lot about personality. So Scott Minard used to come by and pitch his funds at that time, Guggenheim Partners. So bottom line is, we are going to go, excuse my French right now, I'm going to say it, and hopefully no kids around. We're going to fucking hire, okay? The market's going a heck of a lot higher in between pullbacks, three, 400 points, this and that. We're going a lot higher, okay? Just mark my words. My charts are showing it. We could go as high as 30, uh, what, what did my last chart show? And please, Feel free to stop being a lazy bum and scroll, uh, scroll through my Twitter feed. You know, grab a drink or whatever, an ice cream. Go through it. Look at my longer term charts that I'm showing. We could go as high as 3,100 on the S&P. We could go as high as 3,500. We're going higher. Yes, in the in between, there's going to be a lot of quick pullbacks and stuff. But what's new? We had that. How many pullbacks have we had, including this week? And I said, bye. Now, am I that crazy a bull to say, oh, just buy, just, oh, BTFD, buy the F dip? No. I'm looking at tactical charts. I'm looking at the fundamentals. I'm understanding the markets. I'm trying to say, hey, not the beauty about the market is, and this is what Scott Maynard also talks about a lot as I go down my uh, uh, topic list, right, is there are so many great companies, including Boeing. One of the finest institutions 
one of the ultimate American companies that is still way off the highs. Boeing's high was what, 420, 430? The stock is slipping and sliding and still going up, still making money at 352 as of close today. What if Boeing actually gets all their little problems fixed up with the 737 MAX and other stuff? The other planes are selling, by the way. Great. Look, I've traveled extensively around the world. I'm sure many of you have. But if you haven't, that's one thing you guys need to do right now. And in the meantime, while you're traveling around the world, you can always access the real-time Twitter feed and put some trades in. And when you go around the world and you ask somebody, doesn't matter whether it's in Dubai, whether it's in Bangladesh, whether it's in Bombay, whether it's in uh, uh, Zimbabwe, you say, hey, do you know Boeing? They're like, yeah, I fly Boeing. I just uh, took a trip to South Africa to see my grandmother on a Boeing. That's Boeing. So screw this bullshit negativity that is pervasive because as American, we are self-loathers about everything that's American. Seriously, I've always said that. We hate everything American. Like, oh, Boeing sucks. Their planes aren't going to fly. Google sucks because there are privacy concerns. Facebook sucks because the Russians hacked them. Uh, hacked them. The Chinese hacked them all the time. God knows who else hacks them. Netflix sucks because they, you know, because uh, uh, they, they don't make any money. Amazon sucks because they're spending too much money. Apple sucks when no one's buying their iPhones. That's all we do all day long. That's all these big shot frigging analysts on Wall Street. They're all bearish overall. Have you heard anyone say, do it, do it, buy, buy, buy? No, no. I'm not the one saying that either. What I'm saying is that when the markets get down to levels, these are here, here. Why don't you hear those so-called smart voices? Forget the dumb voices in our heads. To say, buy the U.S. markets, buy the bull flags, buy this and that. No. Kramer comes in, explains simple technical terms that I do it in a much more elaborate and more detailed fashion. He makes 20 million off CNBC. I'm making 70 bucks or 90 bucks a month from you guys, and you are getting far more than ever. Guys, I love you all, but I got to wake you all up big time. Big time. Okay? So wake up. So Scott Minard, like he said, it's almost 1998. That means the S&P, honestly, and we're going to look at a couple of charts after this, can go as high as 3,500. We're at 3,000. Another 500 points on the S&P. Can one of you just volunteer? If I get, if we get another 500 plus points on the SPX, what does that translate on the Dow? Quick, somebody. We don't have all night. Somebody just volunteer. What's one S&P uh, 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 E-mini move? What's that related to the Dow? Because after all, we all look at the Dow Jones, like just as a headline number. 500 plus points on the S&P 500 equals roughly how much on the Dow Jones industrial average? 3,500. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, House. Yes, 3,500 to 4,000. What does that bring us on the Dow Jones? Roughly, the Dow Jones right now is uh, 27,000, well, 26,860. So the Dow Jones, let's let's call it 27,000. So 27,000, add on the 3,000. And thank you, House, for volunteering that. And the rest of you who had no idea about the calculation, please wake up, all right? 30,000 on the Dow. We might see... 30,000 on the Dow 
by the end of the year. It's going to blow the frigging mind off every single schmuck on Wall Street, my ex-colleagues, every bear, every self-loader in the U.S. economy. We might see Dow Jones 30,000. Boeing goes back to 400. So many other great companies hitting their previous highs. We're there. United Health, Humana, all these companies that are always attacked by both the Democrats and the Republicans. Drug control, drug control. Oh, we're the worst. You know, we're going to put that. Even Trump, you know, uh, Donald keeps on talking about, oh, we're going to just, uh, we're going to put drug prices on the TV. Okay, great. Oh, hello. You guys all have insurance. Do you ever pay the full price? No. We're not socialists, we're capitalists. Yes, our medical industry does overcharge here and there. But we are never going to get into the communistic, socialistic, dictatorial stage where we should say, no, you're going to charge me $3 for that uh, 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 pill that's going to save my life for the next 10 years. No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that in America. I know Donald talks about it, but he's just talk, talking to his base, right? Like, oh, yeah, this and that. Well, let's put it this way. You want to be freaking healthy? Stop smoking pot. Stop doing coke. Stop taking opiates, all the painkillers. Stop drinking like a fucking maniac and stay healthy. We have a drug problem in the U.S.? Yeah. Why do you have a drug problem? Because Mexican drug lords are sending the stuff over? Yes. Why are they sending the stuff over? Because the demand is here from the small towns in the U.S. to the large metropolitan cities like where we live. There's a drug problem because everybody wants to do some frigging illegal drug. So cut the demand. The supply is going to be fine. They're going to get cut off. The Mexican cartels are not going to be using mules to send the drugs over. It pisses the crowd out of me that we keep on blaming the rest of South America for the drug problem while we are the ones consuming all that garbage. I don't. End of story. Pisses the crap out of me. Cut the demand, the supply will drop. Stop blaming the rest of the world for our problems. We are the problem. Florida, frigging walk over any bar. Oh, I, I want to, I want whatever you call it, like a, 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 like a couple of ounces of coke. I don't know. I don't know the terms, right? Yeah, sure. Somebody's just going to come and slip it to you. So stop blaming the Mexicans, the Colombians, who, who uh, I mean, the drug dealers there, obviously, because they're sending it over because we're the ones snorting it up every two minutes. Thank God my son is not into that crap. Legalization part. Okay, it's really great. No, it's not. I think it's a bunch of, like, yeah, it raised a lot of money for the for the state. But what does it do? Everybody just goes out there and just keeps on smoking, like getting high. And like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get into my car. I'm going to drive. You know what the casualty rates are going to be? But every state is doing it. Look, I'm not some evangelist, but simple common sense. We're really losing it as a country. End of story. Let's move on. So next topic, Scott Miller, check him out. 1998, we can go a lot higher. Uh, the Fed is very easy on the monetary policy. The fiscal policy, which is the government has to do something. We have a real problem, by the way. Uh, we keep on uh, like pushing money into the economy to a level where, well, like Donald says, cut rates for what? Okay, sounds good. Cut rates for what? To keep on pushing the markets higher? Does cutting rates get people into the housing? No. Rates have dropped substantially by the market. The 10-year government bond deal is at 2%, 2.06%. Mortgage rates have dropped 2 percentage points. Has housing sales gone up, skyrocketed? No. So cut rates for what? Next topic. That's the Fed Chairman Powell. He's doing the right thing. 
Uh, you will cut rates in July 31st. But after that, watch out. He's a real guy. Okay? He's not going to keep on pandering to this cutting rate bullshit. We all want markets to go higher. We all want to have our stocks like go through the roof. But we cannot keep on providing the juice, the illegal drug called cutting rates all the time to just juice up our economy. Our economy has to grow on its own legs. We have to fight the competition from overseas. We have to make the best products. We have to move forward. Cutting rates is like a lot of members and traders who just want to get welfare trades, doesn't want to take it because they're too scared. Or they put in a trade, they put a little bit, they make a little bit, like everything's okay. We don't want to keep on promoting bad habits. End of story. Tactical trade alerts and charts. Let's get into it, guys. All right. That's what it's all about. The market right now is a really, truly a stock market. Selective stocks, selective sectors. It's not everything. The correlation is not universal or homogenous. Not everything's going up at the same time, right? We had a new high today. I still had some stocks that were down. Most of our stocks are up a lot. So you have to be selective. You have to know trade management, which, by the way, is the hardest part. You can get in at the right time and say, oh, did I get out at the right time? There is no right time to get out. There is only scaling out and scaling in. Like I put, scaling in means you buy something at four, talking about options, and then you buy it again at, you buy something at four, you buy it again at two, you buy something at four here, you buy it at two, and boom, it goes up. It goes back to four here, you take profits, pull back, you buy it again at three, and then you sell at six. You don't know how to dollar cost average? Scream for help, which means DM, direct message me. Sign up for a few bucks on the ACS sessions. Ask so many people here on Mike Harrington, Trina, Kate's taking a couple of ACS sessions. House has. Still needs to connect and reschedule with me. Um, guys, this is not a cakewalk. I make it pretty easy. And somebody told me the other day, hold on one second. Somebody told me the other day, I don't want to freaking learn anything about technicals. I said, okay, fine, that's great. Just freaking follow my arrows. Just follow the arrows. And then manage your trades accordingly, whether it's the SPY or some other stocks, whether it's Square, whether it's Amazon, whether it's Edward Life Sciences, EW or Sarepta, whether it's uh, the Qs, QQQ, whether it's um, Netflix or Tesla or Helen of Troy that went from four to frigging 15. That was a, a earnings thing yesterday that I don't know if any of you ever like bothered like buying one call. You can bet 300 bucks to make 1500. That's your problem, not mine. Seriously. Okay. And if that 300 went to 100 or even zero, it's not going to kill you, even on a small account. So that's what it's all about, guys. Okay. You know me. I'm straightforward. I don't give a crap. I beat myself up. And I'm not here to beat you guys. Okay. I'm talking about from a coaching standpoint, obviously. But there we go. So here's your tactical roadmap to ultimate precision the head and shoulder, the, uh, uh, the right shoulder. There was your double top. Here was your 
neckline, on the inverse head and shoulders, all explained on multiple videos, all taken out. And now we are here. So now we have a triangle. Look at my last chart on Twitter. And that's a pennant. And uh, it looks like, it looks like that we will most probably try to attack the previous highs. And who knows, we might break out those old highs. So how do we know? I don't know. You don't know. Donald doesn't know. So let's look at the charts. There's your pennant. One second. Features right now about a buck fifty. Adult, I mean, 1.50, obviously. So, oops. And by now, some of you are still frigging clueless about patterns and all this crap that happens that generates significant money for a lot of members who are playing the game right. And yes, taking some losses. But most of the losses that we take are emotional losses or some stocks that just don't work. But 70 to 90% of them are huge winners. So if you still don't get my charts, for God's sakes, contact me. Or just leave, which some members always do, right? We're still going to keep on making shitloads of money, guys. Okay? Doesn't matter what type of market it is. So that's a pattern. So either this is going to happen, which, in my opinion, this is what we're going to go to by the end of the month, if not sooner than that. And in and before that, we could very well come down here, create a W formation. Sorry, right there. It's a megaphone pattern. That means worst case scenario, some bad tweet out of Trump, some bad nasty language coming out of China. We could go down to 29.80, 29.79, which would be an ultimate buying opportunity. All that is on the charts. Now, which exactly uh, uh, is going to happen over the next 48 hours, we'll look at the longer-term charts to figure that out. That we can figure out by looking at a 15-minute chart, which is really the trader's chart. Next. The longer-term charts, guys, right? The swing charts. The one-hour. S&P futures. What a beautiful looking chart. What a lot of heartbreaks when we wake up in the, you know what the worst part of it is, which turns out to me my best days. And I'm sure many of you can relate to that. I know Houses has told me that's uh, happened to him a lot of times, you know, and he's had the best days when markets open down three, 400 points. You open your eyes at like whatever, six in the morning, seven in the morning, um, and it's just like, oh, futures are down 13. Like, oh, God. Okay, great. Get to work. Doesn't matter what job you're doing. You're not like a brave armed forces fighting in different parts of the world. In Afghanistan, in Iraq, and some godforsaken, you know, messed up countries not the people the governments the people are the victims and we're out there to save them you're waking up as a guy who's got a job or even if you don't have a job you actually have the best thing because now you can trade all day long so thank god and get to frigging work i don't care what you do Oh, I'm so busy. I can't watch the market. What kind of bullshit excuse is that? You got a technology. You got your iPhone. You got your tablet. You got your laptop, computer, whatever. You can check things like once an hour. So cut the goddamn excuses out. You know, I've heard that a lot. 
I'm so busy. Yeah, you're so busy because the world is moving. I mean, the, the, my, my trade alerts and my charts and stuff are re- literally guiding you every hour, every 15 minutes. You're so busy, you can't take a swing trade. Okay, great. Then go away. I don't care. What a beautiful head and shoulder and a bull flag right here. Technically speaking, this is where the market gets really frothy. What level is that? On the S&P futures, that is at 30.30. All right, 30.30. That's another 180 to 200 points higher. Can we get there by this week? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Why? Because the momentum is on. The shorts, the dogmatic shorts, the self-loathing, I hate America. I, I hate. No, I shouldn't say hate America. Like uh, uh, those, those, all those funds. Oh, you want to short everything? America can go up. You know, our business all suck. Well, those frigging idiots are all going to get burned when we get here. And what do we do? We short the market at that level. Why? Because we love the markets. We love what American business is doing. But we also know when things are getting frothy. And technically, emotionally, completely euphoric. We are so far from euphoria. We just hit a freaking new high on the S&P 500 at 3,000 plus. For God's sake, did you see any excitement? Did I see real excitement in me? No. Because I am not even reaching my peak performance, even though I'm doing so well. And many of you have no frigging idea. I talked to a guy who's a free trial guy, great guy from the Midwest. And I said, did you make some money of all these great, he's a spy trader and does e-minis and stuff, which is pretty much what, what I show on these charts, right? This is a future chart. He goes, no. I said, great, great. Look at the, flip the coin over. There are 90% of traders and investors, forget investors, mom and pop is not, no longer in the game. They all want to wave that little flag that, like, oh, okay, I love America, make America great. But when it comes to buying a stock in the American markets, no, no, I don't want to buy it. Okay, great. You're a real American? Yeah, right. Just freaking take a flight out, okay? So this guy goes, you know, I said, listen, do you realize that you still have the opportunity to make money? And I meant that because nobody is excited. Who made $30,000 this month? Or 40 or 50? Somebody says, oh, you need a lot of money to do that. Like my neighbor said, who's worth like a freaking zillion bucks. Oh, I, I, I don't read, uh, read that much. Yeah, okay, great. He's driving a Maserati and all that stuff. Okay. You can take 5,000 and make it 20,000. You can take 1,000 and make it 7,000. You can take 50,000 and make it 100,000, just based on your level of risk and your level of how you're active with my alerts. None of us, including me, are at peak performance. Yes, I'm, I'm higher on the scale, as in peak performance, trying to keep up with the stuff that I'm putting across. But some of you, honestly, go to bed tonight and say you suck. Because I go to bed almost every night and say I suck. Because I should be doing half a million dollars a month. I'm a dead serious. And you don't need that much money to do that. You need mental and technical grit. And I just showed you the example of Amazon. So please, stop feeling good about yourself and stop really start feeling really crappy about yourself so you can change yourself that's what i try to do every single day freaking change yourself from being a miser i mean a, a piker and say oh i did okay yeah i made 30 percent on this no this is your hard-earned money make 300 percent on it maximize the moves that are happening get on those momentum trades like square and stuff and ride with it The more you feel comfortable with yourself, the worse the trader you're going to be. Behavioral finance. Always remember that. And the same thing in life. So 
based on that, um, based on a technical level, this is what looks like we might be going to, just just based on the channels and all that stuff. And God help us, if we get a real China deal, we are going to basically go to, we're going to enter this level, this acceleration channel, which we fell out of. Now we have an inverse head and shoulder. And God help us if we get back on that acceleration channel. And you could just trade, trade the spies all day long. We get 30, I mean, not 30, 40, 50, 60, 80, 100, and 20% on those things. Buy them at 60 cents a dollar. Just trade those. And the rest of the companies and stuff, that's, you know, that's a different story. Once we get into this acceleration channel, we're good for 30, 80. That's a lot. That's another 500 plus points from here. Can we get that? Sure. Boeing goes up. Caterpillar goes up. United Health goes up. Humana goes up. All the big Dow stocks. Walmart just rips. Delta Airlines tomorrow bought a couple of calls for like a buck and change, right? 59 and a half calls I told you guys to buy. Did anyone buy a, uh, one or two, uh, a, a couple of Delta calls? Earnings tomorrow? Yes, no? Yes. Excellent. Love that, man. Doesn't hurt. You know, I I, I showed them at a Bucko's, uh, uh, what is it? Bucko 6, what's my cost basis? Let me see. Uh, Delta, Delta. I got way too much stuff in this. Oh, which uh, reminds me, I will give you, uh, give you guys a quick trick how to manage um, your account so you don't mix up the swing trades with the with the short term trades. So yeah, I bought bought it at a buck oh nine. Bought a couple of them, like a hundred. Yeah, right. Okay. Sometimes I wish I had the balls to do that. I used to do that. I'm I'm gonna get back to doing that of buying a hundred like bang. Right? Twelve thousand dollars in the in Delta. So I, I told you guys to buy it around a buck or six, buck or seven. It closed at a buck twenty-seven. That's twenty-seven percent or twenty-five percent on your money. Since I just gave it to you guys. Not to mention Tesla, which I haven't traded for weeks now. I got into it today around two. It closed at almost three. Based on my charts. So Delta, you could have bought it at a buck or six, or whatever. And thank you for answering. Uh, um, I think it was House who said that. Great, you have twenty-five percent of your money in two hours. What business can you do where you can make twenty-five percent of your money in two hours? My biggest fault is that because of the volatility in the market, because I'm too disciplined. I don't jam in as hard as I used to. And I'm getting close to it, guys. Because the last leg of that wave five, which takes us up another five, 600 points, is about to happen. That's when you jam the frigging pedal to the metal, hit that 600 horsepower car that you're driving, and you just, within three, four, five days, make an ultimate profits that you're like yes then you pull back it's gonna happen very soon and it's been happening by the way just so you know okay so this is it so this is what you got and we could this is the first level of major resistance. Remember, anytime you get into an uptrend channel, you're going to get hit with sell programs right when it's trying to get in there. It's like ramming. It's like a, 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 um, a running back going against, and I'm not a big football guy, right? going against the other guy, offensive you know, uh, 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 linesman, and just going boom. So what's going to happen? You just like broad just through him? No, you get pulled, pulled back. But keeps on doing it. You're right in there. And this is the sick part where the ultimate dogmatic, my ex Wall Street hedge fund shorts just say, they cry uncle like, oh my God, we can't take this anymore because they're down like maybe the what, 20, 30, 40 million on their funds. 
we want them to keep on shorting. We need shorts to get the market higher. And I'm sure all of you understand that. Okay, so that's it. Uh, next one is your daily. Uh, this is your actual S&P 500. We created a bull flag pennant, right? Right there. Technically speaking, this is still in good shape. This is a cup and handle on the stoves, which should break out, which means we will basically cross over the old highs. Things go wrong. We know exactly where we're going to come down to, which is around 29.81. Create a W formation. All depends how the, what the internals tell us. It is a very fluid market, but this chart is very important. Next one is your um, daily. Now, this is frigging exciting. Why is it exciting? It's telling us what the market is thinking longer term. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a bull flag about to rip higher towards uh, 3025, 3030 on the E-minis. This, I told you guys on the last video, was what we were watching for. Whether or not we would basically hold this stochastic level around 60, 63. We didn't even come close to it. It is now a W formation. Think about it for a minute. What we do need to see to get that bombastic move, another six, seven, or 800 points, is the 50 day moving average starting to curl higher. The 34 is on party mode, Miami style. It's going higher. Right there. See that? The angle. Remember, everything is structural. Why? Everything is mathematical. That new trial, free trial member who's like, yeah, I'm going to join. I said, do you realize? He goes, your charts are so freaking accurate. I said, yes. Why? Because I'm a freaking Einstein? No. It's because I look at things in a mathematical way and I draw my lines. If I can draw the, uh, these straight lines, everything is a straight line, right? I don't draw lines like which are like this. Everything is about touching contact points. And the only reason to touch it that well, because algos run on actual mathematical numbers. Not like our, like, uh, wake up in the morning, like, oh, really, like, you know, sad. No, humans think like that. Algos are binary numbers. One plus one equals two. Or sometimes it doesn't, but it's numbers. So what we do need to see, ladies and gentlemen, and we are seeing it. Oh, wow, we are seeing it. The 50-day moving average curling higher. The spread between the 50 and the 34 has to narrow, okay? The spread between the 34 and the 50 has to narrow. Pure, hardcore technical analysis. Too much to spread, it has to, something has to give. This either has to move higher or this has to move a little bit lower. That's why over the short term, we might get a quick sharp pullback. This is still, Technically, very good looking. What's the next chart? The weekly. Wow. This is like um, when you want to determine whether your marriage is going to last, right? Like, okay, did some stupid things, but my wife still loves me. Uh, what's going to happen? Well, let's look at Frank's weekly charts. Doesn't matter what type of marriage you have, whether you have a boyfriend, girlfriend, like, you know, hey, you know, each to its own, right? So bottom line is this, ladies and gentlemen, is telling us that the bull flag is so intact. You show this to your three-year-old, your four-year-old, your five-year-old. I show this to my 20-year-old. He's going to say, Dad, please stop bothering me, okay? But you show it to a child, they'll be like, Daddy, Mommy, it's going higher. So why the heck as adults are we so freaking scared all the time? Volatility. This is one damn good-looking chart constructed my way. Boom. Scott Minard says we go to go to 3,500 by the time all said and done. <gasps> Holy cow, my charts are showing me 3,200 just on the bull flag. 
and 3,400. And 3,700. Now, these things don't happen overnight, obviously. Those are things that are going to happen over the next couple of months after we get a substantial pullback in the month of August and September, which is standard procedure. So in the meantime, trade these levels. Okay. Now, want to hear some stocks you guys are on, and uh, let's do it. 9.28 p.m. Let's uh, make good use of our time. Let me show you a, a, a one or two that I like a lot. Well, you know, you guys already know the ones that I like. Um, I like things that are coming off long bases, off the bottom, not at the highs, and boom. Complete merger acquisition play. Love it. This is the ultimate bull flag. Calls are cheap. You just got to be patient. Patience. Pay. Patience. What's the patience? A years? No. Talking weeks. Patience, grasshopper. Remember? Karate kid. Patience. I got to write this down. I used to see it all the time on stock trades back in the days when I had 8,000 members, and now it's, what, crossing 32,000? I mean, come on. I don't even bother posting there. Why don't they all join us? In which case, I'll give you guys all free subscriptions, and we get 30,000 members on stock trades. Think about that. At 70 bucks a pop, <laughs> forget about it. It's going to happen. Patience, grasshopper, on swing trades. Bull freaking flag. America. Howard Hughes Corporation. Read up on them. And you honestly think this thing is going to just die? This is the this is picture a uh, perfect bull flag. Stay long. Okay? Stay long. Always have some of the calls. Keep on rolling them out every month. You're going to wake up one morning just the way we did when the call just exploded on the day that I um Told you guys to buy it. It was up, what, like 200%? Now it's consolidating, and it's a bull frigging flag. F, like Frank. They used to call me Frank the Tank back on Wall Street. Hmm. Very funny, because I wasn't a 300-pound gorilla, but they called me Frank the Tank. Actually, I'm 400 pounds, just for people that know. All right, next stock. Stocks, guys, wake up. Look at this unbelievable pattern. This is one of the biggest macro W formations I've seen. Patience. Again, it's going to get to 80. It's going to get to 85. Eventually, it's going to get to 90. Square. Keep on buying, rolling them over, days it's down, as long as the pattern doesn't change. And I've shown you guys multiple charts on Square. This is what makes you rich. You focus on a couple of stocks. You get to understand the patterns. You just put on bigger money than you used to. And you just make it happen. Now, quick question I'm going to ask some of you, and I'm sure some of you know. What happened here other than the external candle? What happened here? What happened here, uh, aside from this huge bullish bull flag formation? I'm going to give you a simple answer. What is happening here? <clears throat> please, please, somebody, wake up. You got moving averages crossing over. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, House. House, that's you? It's me. Yeah, thank you, brother. Yes, like House said, and all of you guys, I have taught this so many times. I mean, come on. Somebody else should have stepped out and taken houses, you know, A-plus thing. We have a 3450 crossover. What happens on a 3450 crossover? On the spies, on the markets, on stocks, they go higher. Yes, we can pull back three or four points, but the 3450 crossover means 34 days. 
50 days. That's a long time. You guys have no idea what happened 50 days ago, let alone, you know, let alone like, you know, what the markets did. You get a 3450 crossover like my friend House just mentioned right there. You want to be long that frigging stock. Square is in the whole crypto business. Fundamentally speaking, just make it happen, okay? Yes, the stock can come down a little bit. Yes, we're not going to like it some days when your calls, which are at a buck or two bucks, down like to a dollar. But you keep on following the trend. On top of that, it is a very large inverse head and shoulder that has pattern completion at 82.94. So good. So play the four points and make 200% on your option calls. Because once it hits that level, you know that it is going to have a minor pullback. Now, will the 90 happen? Sure. 90 will happen on major analyst upgrades, which you already got, and more. Remember, the analysts love to upgrade stocks that are going higher. Nobody was an upgrade here. Nobody was an upgrade there. They're an upgrade here. Great. Go with it. 83 is the first stop. And if it busts the move from here, then 90. Any other stock anyone wants to look at? Amazon, we're going to take our new highs. I have the 2000, 2020s. I didn't even bother alerting people because I've shown so many charts on Amazon. It's time for all of you kids to wake up and do your own thing. I already gave you the 1960, 1980s, which are up 600 to 900%. Remember, the charts are, you don't need my alerts if you're just following the charts. So let's do this. This is the big cap stock monster. Look at this freaking chart. 2050 is given. Got to buy those options 20, uh, 10, 20, $30 out, like I show you guys. $6 options went to 40 and change. The 1960s went from seven and change to 62. It's just like, you know, choke your throat. Come on, guys. $700 goes to 6,000. 7,000 goes to 62,000. So please, for once, mentally choke yourself so you wake up a little bit. I need to wake up more because I'm producing these things, but I'm not getting the full blast of the results because I'm selling a little bit too early. Fifty points on a two thousand dollar stock. Give me a break. What percentage is that, guys? Oh, it's up fifty bucks. What percentage is fifty points on two thousand dollars? Please, somebody tell me. Because that's it's a very small percentage move to take out its old high. What is fifty dollars on two thousand dollars, Kate? Mary, Beth, Mike, Trina. 2%. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. 2%. 2%. We're not talking about biotechs that go up 10% in a day. We're talking 2%. Remember, it's a law of large numbers. 2% means that it takes out its old highs. And you don't think Amazon can do 2%? Their prime day is coming up. Think about that for a minute. 2% on a $10 stock is 20 cents. 2%, let's put this, let's so everyone had gets a little bit cleared up, okay? 2%, thank you, okay? So on a $10 stock, 2% is 20 cents. Whoopee, nobody gets excited. Yes, maybe the options go up a little bit, not that much. On a $100 stock, 2% is $20, right? Exactly, 20 bucks. 
I'm so I, I'm sorry. To, uh, my uh, my fault. On a ten dollar stock. Thank you, Mike. Two percent move is twenty cents. Unless you have a lot of stock or a whole bunch of those cheap, cheap, cheap calls, you're not going to make any money. So on a hundred dollar stock, two percent is two dollars. On a thousand dollar stock, which we have quite a few. God bless America. Okay. It is 20 bucks. Yes. Now people are starting to get excited. On a $2,000 stock, 2% is $40. Now people are really excited. On booking, that's another stock that we have played consistently here and there. That type of things happen. Now, God help us if Amazon goes up 5%, which it can, technically speaking. That's $100 on the stock. Your options will be up a lot. That's it, guys. All right. It's 9.38. I'm going to take the dogs out. I love you all. Any other stocks? Anyone wants to see? Trina? Trina, you always ask me questions. Um, beyond yeah beyond's a very trading stock um haven't traded that over the past week or so i did notice it thanks for asking it is actually breaking out very nicely okay so uh on the daily for it looks like beyond's good for around 169 i do find the options a little bit too expensive um but technically speaking it is it doesn't have enough internals yet just so you guys know because it's a new stock right it has to be out there for six seven months to really develop a real uh, uh um internal history or a technical history but just looking at this uh what i'm seeing on beyond is we had that correction we made some money on that little short now we have this move here so i uh, i the only way i would trade beyond is purely through the charts and um I would say that the best case scenario is right here, right there where it topped, right? Right there when it reversed the supply zone, 168. The stock closed today at 163. Is it worth playing it for five bucks? Maybe. I don't know. But uh, I would say, oops, sorry. I would say that um, on if it breaks out, over the 170 level the stock will automatically get a big short squeeze towards uh one sec got to fix this uh it's all about supply and demand right all you have to do, do is look at the candles where the sellers came in uh what's the next move 172 so that's what i would look at stock Netflix, which has delivered great results, pulled back nicely today, but look at that freaking picture. No analyst loves Netflix. Disney's great, Mickey's great, blah, 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 blah. Netflix, Scott Minard, Guggenheim guy that I talked about earlier, that I still have a sword from Guggenheim. Well, I'll put up the picture on that sword on, on, on my Twitter feed one day, you'd see, because I was such a big, believer in them and sold so much uh, millions millions of dollars to institutional clients who did very well by the way on the guggenheim products uh, back in the days uh, so look at this massive cup big range does it really look like it's going to completely break and collapse no can it drop three four five points on a certain day yes do I like the fact that most analysts from my old uh, work on Wall Street hate it? I love it. The fact that they hate it. Oh, they can make money, you know, blah, blah, blah. In the meantime, Stranger Things, uh, that weird show, I've never watched it, is like going to the roof, like you know, they don't even know what the heck to do with it. Netflix announces a little advertising on their shows. You think you're going to drop Netflix as a member? I'm not. 
I've been watching some great shows on Netflix over the past couple of months. I actually had played for Netflix for years and years, never even watched it. And then I started realizing, look at these freaking shows. They actually challenge your mind. They're fun. Netflix is about to cross the 3450. Right there. Once it crosses over, see you later. Josh Brown on CNBC, very smart guy. You know Josh Brown, right? Um, keeps on saying, you got to buy it over the big level of 385, 84. Wait till it gets there. Well, as tactical traders, we're looking at different stuff. We would rather be there in early because when that 386 goes off, it's going to be see you later 400, 410. So have a little bit in there. Just rolling across, stop looking at it every 15 minutes, stay long. TTD, my good friend Mary asks me. TTD is a Google play because they're the ultimate Google thing. TTD right now is being sold by the hedge funds. Where would I buy a, uh, 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 again, be an aggressive buyer of Trade Desk? Is approximately around 230 to 233. That's where I would be an aggressive buyer, right around here. Right now, we are in a mini high level bear flag. So 229, 222, 230 would be my buy point in a more aggressive way. Very powerful company. Now, saying all that, this company can be bought out any day, any minute. It's too valuable, a specialized company in digital programmatic advertising that was introduced. This company was introduced to me by one of our loyal members, uh, Brian Ching, uh, I think two years ago or a year ago. That's how he started following me. Nobody knows TTD. All right, guys. That's it for now. Amazon, Google, Facebook, everyone hates, they're so bad, is frigging on a tier. This chart that was drawn weeks ago, Facebook is going to 210 and it's going to hit its high. It's going to do it. These things, you just got to roll with it. Buy the cheap calls, buy the maybe five bucks up, 10 bucks out. If you buy 10 bucks out, then you got to buy time. But this, these are good looking charts. The market has excellent trading setups. We all suck. Me less than others because we are not fully capitalizing on what the market's offering us. Two reasons why. Volatility and the idiots on the media. Let's cut them out. Let's focus. That could be a fun ride every day, but the best trades come on the days that you buy when the markets are down three, 400 points. Remember, the markets need kinetic energy that is only created by markets pulling back like a slingshot. Get out there, buy a slingshot, pull it back, and let it go. That's how markets work. On that note, have a great evening. God bless you all. Some some new people that I see like, you know, in here, uh, here uh, uh, popping in, Kim, Who's Kim? Hi, Kim. Hi. Are you, where'd you land up? Are you a member? Yeah, I followed you on StockSwift. Excellent. Listen to the whole video when I put it up on YouTube. Yeah, you it was kind of late. Fo fo so follow me on StockTwist. Remember one thing. What we do here is beyond StockTwist, beyond all the garbage out there. We're not big talkers. We're not telling you you're going to put 10,000 and make yourself a millionaire, but the trades that we put out there, you join us, you get to see what happens on the real-time Twitter feed, which is basically where all my content is delivered, right there, okay? And uh, is that the one? Yep, that's the one. Uh, and you can talk to any one of these people who are here with us for a long time, and you know what's going on. That's it. On so. Twitter is where we deliver all our content, okay? 
So all these charts, all the trade alerts, that's a, that's actually a Twitter ad, not mine. Uh, let me just put this out there. Are you in the US or overseas? I'm in the Netherlands. Ah, okay, you're Dutch. Love Amsterdam. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and uh, what's the other place that we went to? A couple of times. Um, excellent. So all these charts, Square, all like what to buy, when to sell, Tesla, we got into it today. We're already up about 30%. What 30? Like almost 40% yeah. on it. Uh, let me finish. Okay. Um, we are not geniuses here. We are just very straightforward. Only thing we'll tell you. We know at Clueless A Trading, the U.S. market's better than anybody out there. Anybody out there. These charts have made people thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Some people make a hundred, some people, uh, you know, make thousands. Um, so join us, and the way you join us, you go to the website, Clueless A Trading, and uh, you go to the website, and uh, one second, you just go up there. Mm -hmm. One second. This is our chat room. Sometimes it's busy, sometimes it's not. Nowadays it's not that busy, which is good, which means everybody's scared. We like it when people are scared about the markets. What is happening? There you go. You go to you go to subscribe, and then you join. Uh, and uh, the the one where you get all the direct content to trade the U.S. markets and stuff is uh, is is this uh, subscription, the gold membership. Okay, and uh, that's it. Um, in the meantime, uh, I have all my videos, which I do uh, most of them for free on Google, YouTube, and uh, feel free to listen to some of them. But listening doesn't make you money. Acting does. Okay, acting on the trades is what makes you money. So all these things, the real-time Twitter content, all through the day. So you are totally connected with what's happening with the markets. This is where we call the markets here, here, here. This chart was drawn before things happen, before things happen. And look what happened. Okay, so right there, right there, this is what happened. Okay, right shoulder, inverse and shoulders. We're a very technical service, but we try to make it simple. So this was your double top, double uh, uh, top the uh, head, left shoulder, right shoulder. We just blew through past it. See you later. And right now, the markets ended. Uh, the markets ended right around here, which means we're going to retest the highs, or we'll pull back a little bit and still retest the highs. And I have already explained on my videos tonight that we can possibly make newer highs that nobody is going to think that the markets can make. On that note, please join us. Have a great evening. God bless you all. Good night from New York. Okay, good night. <laughs>